this is how they operate. In fact, um, I'm not the only one uh, who's a current victim. My former employer is exploiting the legal system uh, to abuse others right now, all in the darkness, fully knowing that the fear and risks it takes to speak up. Hey, I don't feel comfortable working here because of, again, all the sexual harassment or, uh, you know, uh, the, the shit that you've been making us do. I don't want to work here anymore. You don't even have to say that. Just like, I, I don't feel comfortable working here anymore, Stephen. I want to leave. I, I want to go uh, and try something else. To then be, like, as punished by him. As if it's like, you know, it's almost like you can't leave the family, you know? Like, you cannot leave the inner circle. No one does. I will destroy you. You will not work anywhere. I don't care that you have a child on the way. It wouldn't sound like that, though. I don't care that you have a child on the way. Steven Crowder, uh, one of the worst ghouls on the right who has been making lots and lots of money by being an asshole usually towards trans people, gay people, black people, Jewish people. Uh, I mean, you could say that he discriminates against lots of people who don't happen to be white, straight, cis. Uh, there's been long rumors that he's in fact himself a bisexual uh, and that he's doing a lot of what he's doing uh, as a way of, like there is a lot of people who uh, could or may or may not be closeted and uh, may or may not be, like uh, obviously bisexuals are not a monolith, there's evil ones and there's good ones, it's, uh, like any other group of people. Um, and uh, it's been reported for a long time that he's incredibly abusive towards his staff. Uh, there has been multiple reports of numerous staff members coming forward with allegations of serious abuse, including him exposing himself and exposing his genitals. Uh, to the rest of his staff, which he then turned into a skit because he thought it was hilarious. Uh, and then in his skit, uh, you know, f acknowledging the fact that staff members came forward to say that he was exposing himself, he then pretends or maybe was exposing himself on air uh, while, well, you know, obviously uh, choosing an angle that wouldn't make it to OS. Uh, there's no way of truly knowing. Uh, there's also been reports of him putting his testicles uh, on uh, his own employees, uh, as well as the horrifying work conditions outside of the, you know, physical and sexual abuse on the behalf of Steven Crowder, allegedly. But uh, yeah, it's is apparently just a terrible, terrible place to work where he just acts like some kind of weird dictator who makes a lot of his staff do things that they're not comfortable with. Like, even people who have come out after working on Steven Crowder's show who happen to be horrifying human beings, like, we're talking about people who are just straight up, like, neo-Nazis and stuff like that, they've even come out and made statements about how, yeah, I, I was just always confused why so many of the sketches were just us doing what I thought was really kind of, like, gay stuff, uh, and it was to own the libs, but then we're all just, like, running around greasing each other up in, in, in the sketch, and I was like, how is this owning the libs again kind of shit, right? Um, and then if uh, everyone doesn't know the history of Steven Crowder, right here is Jared, a.k.a. Not Gay Jared, because Steam Crowder thinks it's epic, super funny to, to give his staff members names based on identity politics. So that's why there's like, uh, you know, uh, quarter black Garrett. Uh, there's not gay Jared. Uh, there's, uh, yeah, this like, this, it's just the thing. He thinks it's really fucking funny. This is a really old sketch. Uh, this one was done seven years ago. Uh, where Stephen Crowder uh, and one of his employees, he gets his employee to dress in drag to attend a women's rally. Yeah! All right, there you go. Can you hold on? Let's get okay. This is my pussy hat. You're, I won't grab it. Hold on, your pussy. <laughs> I promise you. Thank you. I can be up here. I can show my tits with everyone. Yes! Woo! Now, um, one of the things I want to point out, I don't think that kissing someone else in public is pedophilia. I do not. That is something that Steven Crowder tries to push on you. Now, he adds a, a comma to that, right? He'll say that when it's a drag queen doing it, well, then that's grooming, right? A lot of the right does this, right? If you, if you are uh, a, a drag queen, uh, then uh, your very existence in public apparently is a form of grooming that it, just by existing, just like walking around in public, you, it could be that you're dressed incredibly tasteful, could could be that you are dressed like a princess or a mermaid or something, uh, but that apparently is, is grooming. Uh, the same people who say this, though, this is why I like point in this clip out to show the hypocrisy in this segment filmed seven years ago Steven Crowder dresses in drag makes one of his employees dress in drag they make cult may sorry make out multiple times there is children who can be visibly seen watching them and in one segment not gay Jared rubs his penis above his pants I want to remind you all by the way for people who continuously say well that's not the same thing though there's no yes there's many children present feminist protests teach us well not much Namely, that sexual objectification is bad unless women do it. Tits are fun. Bras do legitimately suck. Not gay Jared's a surprisingly good kisser. So this is important because this is the very individual who has now released a statement that we're about to watch. Uh, this is the individual in question. 
And Donald Trump wants to infringe upon women's rights, but we're not exactly sure which rights, something, something, something pussy. But what did we accomplish? Well, not a whole lot either, but we felt good about ourselves. Now you'll notice what happens at the end of this shot. It felt good to go on down to the protest, take part, and showcase these right people. There. And again, this is one of Steven Crowder's employees. I don't know if this was scripted. I don't know if he asked him to do this. I don't know if this was something that just happened impromptu. But this is, again, an employee of Steven Crowder in public uh, as part of the sketch, dressing in drag, making out with Steven Crowder multiple different times, and now grabbing his crotch. Jared Monroe has done this video. Quote, I didn't want to do this. This can't go on any longer. And uh, as the famous saying goes, sunlight is the best disinfectant. So... Here we go. I want to be clear about something, by the way, because I haven't watched this yet, so I don't know what he is about to say. Um, you can be a conservative. You can be a right winger. It doesn't matter what your political ideology or affiliation is. There is absolutely no justification for employees being abused, either physically or sexually, by their employer. And honestly, it doesn't matter who you are, what, what you're doing. Uh, none of it is ever in any way, shape or form acceptable. Also, another point, uh, it doesn't excuse maybe uh, a lifetime of you doing incredibly terrifyingly bad bigoted work, uh, even if you are now coming out to speak out against uh, your ex-employer, if you're also not going to do anything to try and now undo a lot of the damage you've done by all of your homophobia, all of your transphobia, all of your racism, all of your anti semitism like all that kind of stuff that they've been doing for a long time. So multiple things can be true at once. I'm currently being legally abused and intimidated into silence by a former employer. This has been going on for a while now and it simply cannot live in darkness for another day. Uh, but I am asking for your help to fight back. First, some context. Uh, in late October of 2023, to my surprise, I was served these papers. A cease and desist from my former employer. It threatened severe legal action in the form of a lawsuit and demanded I cease communications with my friends. The scare tactics uh, of cease and desist are generally to intimidate, isolate, and eventually devastate. Uh, like most cease and desist, it also demanded that I swiftly provide uh, them written certificate of my compliance. I did not. In the same delivery, I was also served these papers, a Rule 202 petition from my uh, former employer. You can look that up on the internet. I know I had to. Um, these documents were filed with the county court of my former uh, place of employment, demanding that I be subject to an oral deposition under oath for an unlimited amount of time where they were free to interrogate me on pretty much any private matter that they chose. Also in this petition for discovery, they demanded that I turn over documents. Uh, of all communications with more than a dozen of my friends, an unlimited amount of unnamed persons uh, in any form and Wow, that is aggressive. Yeah. I don't see how you didn't think that this was going to backfire. And also, what is Crowder doing behind the scenes is the thing that I'm really wondering about here. You know, like how much stuff are you worried about getting out that you're like, we got to cover this up. Ah, you can't talk to your friends. Ah, I want their social media. Over an unlimited period of time. I did not. Now, I did not for a few reasons. Uh, number one, I have seen how this employer handles legal issues, and I, I knew that once I opened the door to legal abuse, it would never, ever be shut. This is how they operate. In fact, um, I'm not the only one uh, who's a current victim. My former employer is exploiting the legal system uh, to abuse others right now all in the darkness, fully knowing that the fear and risks it takes to speak up. Well, the other big thing, the cost. That's the thing. Like, Steven Crowder is rich as fuck. I have no idea what Rumble's contract was, but it had to have been competitive with the Daily Wire's $50 million offer for what was it, a four or five year term. Uh, so Steven Crowder, and that's outside of Mug Club and all the other shit and the sponsorships and all the other stuff that he brings in. So the guy is fucking loaded. So yeah, you can definitely try to apply a lot of pressure to anyone to try and silence them uh, through, you know, various, like you're seeing right now, play out. Uh, this kind of harassment at the hands of the powerful isn't just designed to financially ruin somebody. It's designed to cripple their soul. Now, I wasn't about to put uh, my family on a embarking upon a journey down that road. Number two, I was not about to allow the privacy of my personal life, the trust 
uh, I have with my friends and the real, real relationships I have with them to be violated in such an evicted, vindictive and abusive manner. It simply was not gonna happen. Um, I received the latest article of legal harassment on Friday, March 22nd, 2024. After a month now of litigation exhausting even the court with relentless amendments to their Rule 202 petition, my ex-employer was finally awarded their request for my oral deposition and any document of communication with my friends that they believe may provide any avenue to sue me or others. As it stands, uh, they await. I, I really should be talking to a lawyer about this. I'm curious, how far reaching can you make something like that? Like how many friends, which friends? And, and like, at what point is it like, well, these ones specifically could potentially, uh, you know, be involved in lawsuits down the road. So yes, uh, we're gonna need evidence of communications with them as well. Wait, my forced cooperation. It's so broad. I will not, I will continue to fight. Uh, now here's the big question is, what was their entire reason for this harassment and the basis for their claims? These documents, an NDA, some more context. I signed this separation agreement, an NDA containing a strict and very broad non-disparagement clause many years ago. Uh, I voluntarily left my job after deciding I could no longer put myself or my growing family through the toxic and abusive work environment I had endured for years. Um, this place was and is to this day a workplace rife with sexual misconduct, uh, degeneracy, and aggression. The things I saw, the things done to me, and the things uh, I witnessed my employer do to others were disgusting, shocking, and utterly um, indefensible. I have the receipts. Oh, what? This all took a serious toll on my personal health. Um, to the point near the end of my tenure, the work environment had become so toxic that I had to be admitted into a heart hospital. And after many tests, I was ultimately put on anti-anxiety medication. This condition um, was something new to me. I had no history of it prior to my employment there and have never been treated for it since. Now, when I decided to resign, my wife was pregnant with our firstborn child. It was a terrifying position to be put in, um, but I absolutely knew that I could not be the husband or dad I was called to be for them in my current state. NDAs cannot cover unlawful activity. Yeah, which is why I think so many of the ex-employees have come forward and, and there's been numerous stories now. It's not just, you know, Jared. It's been other people who have come forward to say that, yes, Steven Crowder's uh, work abuse was absolutely horrifying. Uh, he was notorious for it. He was well known for it. Um, and, you know, he didn't think any of it was serious. Uh, he didn't, uh, you know, ever give you an opportunity to try and, uh, you know, have an opposing viewpoint in regards to the way that he was treating everybody. Something had to change. And if I couldn't change my work environment, then it was time for me to remove myself from it. Uh, I was fully aware that willfully resigning would mean I would forfeit any sort of severance. Uh, I trusted that God would provide. Um, what I had not anticipated is how much it would cost me to quit. This is where my first experience with legal abuse began. Uh, starting from the day I delivered my notice of resignation, I was put on the phone with company lawyers and the good cop, bad cop coercion campaign to get my signature on an NDA was well underway. What else is really wild about this is that like this is like the stuff that you hear about like the mafia, right? Like once you're in, you're in. There is no leaving. You don't get to leave. You know, what are you trying to do? I was told many lies throughout this process. I immediately hired my own legal counsel and uh, by the grace of God, understanding my predicament, uh, he even agreed to work for half of his normal rate. Even so, the legal fees immediately began to pile up. My former employer and his attorney argued I could not work in media anywhere in the world, and most certainly not in the United States for two years. Um, this is not because I had voluntarily signed some sort of non-compete in my original employment agreement, it was because they decided a non-solicitation clause that was in said original agreement would retroactively be interpreted as the so you can see here the pattern where Steven Crowder not only was uh, allegedly physically and sexually abusing his employees, but also he wanted to make sure that they're punished if they tried to leave the inner circle, right?
Like, not only are you not going to be able to speak about this, your NDA is going to be ironclad. So, uh, yeah, you're not allowed to tell anyone about the fucked up shit that I was doing to you. But in addition to that, I want to make sure that for at least a period of two years, you don't work anywhere else in the media. Because a lot of people were asking, what the hell happened to Jared? You know, and he was he was like Stephen's right hand man for a ton of the sketches behind the board, you know, bouncing off each other. Uh, and then all of a sudden he just like disappeared from the show. Broadest and strictest non-compete one could draft. They told me on my Twitter account, a, another potential lifeline to future work, uh, which I had owned and been the sole manager of since 2009, was to be turned over to them on the argument that it was somehow their intellectual property wow. now. Uh, presumably to keep me from working even further, my former employer even tried to claim my personal production equipment, gear I had owned for years prior to working there as company property. <laughs> That's wild. By the way, everybody, um, if you have an employer trying to do this kind of stuff, I would definitely speak to a lawyer because no, that this doesn't just suddenly, it's not because you work for someone for a couple of years, all of a sudden, anything that you've worked on prior to meeting them suddenly becomes their intellectual property. That's not how this works. I mean, unless you signed over specific documentation that says, yes, you will now, I'm going to uh, sign over the rights to any ideas I had, any social media accounts I've had, any scripts or movie ideas I've ever had, as well as you now own all of my property. Like, and, Unless you've done something along that lines, there's nothing that an employer can do after you want to leave. The, by the way, you should also just be able to leave a company, but there's nothing they can do to try and say that they own your fucking social media. After producing every receipt to validate my ownership, a vicious lie that I stole from the company was born and disseminated by my employer. Uh, by the way, breaking their side of this bogus mutual non-disparagement agreement. Um, Lance hasn't seen the boilerplate. So I used to work directly in like media for uh, a number of different companies for, you know, I was a film editor and I was also like helping with special effects supervision and stuff like that. And yeah, I've tried telling people this so many times. Those companies are fucking ruthless, especially if you are an up and coming, like wannabe first time, like I just wrote my script, I'm really excited, I got this thing to sell. You'll sign anything that comes your way because you think it's a break. Like, okay, fine, I lose all the rights to this idea and they get to do whatever they want with it. But at the end of the day, everyone has to start somewhere, right? This is my foot in the door after doing this, after a couple of years, maybe I'll be able to move on from there. And it's through that system that employers in media exploit the fuck out of the people that work for them all the time, especially if you're like, you're hungry, you're young, you're an intern, you're coming into a company like this, and it doesn't matter if it happens to be, you know, some major corporation or this fucking empire bigotry that Steven Crowder started. I'm sure a lot of people, and even to this day, would be very excited to, like, you know, work for Steven Crowder. Like, oh, Steven Crowder, you're so famous. You, well, not as much today, but back in the day, like, oh, you got one of the biggest YouTube channels, blah, blah, blah. You're really owning the libs. I want to fucking get on board on this. I want to get some fucking liberal tears. We're going to make sketches, comedy. I'm going to get paid to live my dream, and then maybe I could, like, you know, leapfrog from doing this into something else. And it's like, no, you are entering a super exploitative, super abusive environment. And in addition to that, the fucking, the guy who runs the whole thing, the front-facing celebrity of this entire operation, he's going to be physically abusive and sexually abusive possibly to you. I have those receipts as well. All I simply wanted to do was peacefully leave. It was clear by my employer, though, that this was not only unacceptable, but that I needed to be punished for doing so. Being bullied on each of these terms and many more, fighting for my basic freedoms to leave and provide for my family immediately sent me into legal debt. I did not want to sign anything, mind you. Um, but the negotiations with my former employer left no question that without a signed NDEA, my guaranteed silence, uh, I would undoubtedly be harassed well into the future. And by the way, this is also like Steven Crowder, the group of people who always talk about family values, family values. Oh, you know, the queers are trying to destroy the nuclear family. It's supposed to be Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve, all this kind of shit. doesn't give two fucks about the family. Uh, example, look at Steven Crowder and how he treats his like his wife and uh, how he treats uh, his own employees who are like, hey, I, I don't feel comfortable working here anymore. I want to provide for my newborn. Uh, I got to think of my family. Can I leave? It's like, no, you can't leave. You want to leave? I, I am going to fucking prevent you from ever working in this industry again your shit is mine now i own you i own your social media i own your life i own your tongue i fucking own your tongue all right need fucking stick that thing out because it's mine now no matter if there are future claims against me for or for where i worked or uh what i did or what i said were legitimate or not it didn't matter it would cost me thousands and thousands to fight back and they knew that i had to make a deal with nothing but um uh, 
a small savings account and my last paycheck, I had to accept the deal I could afford. It's very important to note here that, uh, where is it? It's here. I was not paid a single dollar for its consideration. Uh, which brings me to what you might be asking next. What was the reason I did sign this? And uh, again, as a, a man with his first child on the way, the uh, small victory I got from it. The primary reason I signed the NDA was for a small carve out in the non-compete clause, which allowed me to freely seek employment using some of my skill sets at another specific company. Uh, at least I could feed my family. That provision, however, was a lie. Um, and upon starting my new job at the new said company, I was giving another one of these, a cease and desist, and uh, was promptly unlawfully terminated from that, that position. So he just wanted to destroy him, you know? Like it wasn't enough just to be like, you want to leave. It's like, no motherfucker, you're never gonna work again. Not in this city. I added thousands town. more to my legal debt trying to fight back. My wife was very pregnant by this time and without a financial safety net for groceries and a baby crib, much less a legal fund to file a countersuit, I simply had to let it go, trusting God had a plan. Uh, to that point, I want to say that I'm happy to report that he did have a plan and what was intended for evil, God used for good. And it took me years to pay off my legal debt. But this story of God's faithfulness in my life became a, a very large part of my testimony and I am um, I'm just so grateful for the opportunities that he gave me. And uh, yeah, it's a story for another day. But um, back to... I bet he changed his mind on welfare real quick. I don't know. We have no confirmation of that happened. But if so, oh yeah, Kel Supreze, you know. Ayn Rand got to be like the biggest fucking public figure to ever live to denounce all these social safety programs. Was herself a recipient of social safety programs. <laughs> Shocker. This. While my supposed not compete expired. Is it bad I don't feel sorry for him? Well, like... Again, multiple things can be true at once, okay? Uh, he has worked with Steven Crowder to promote a ton of vile bigotry on a monstrously huge scale that, like, unless he wants to start working to try and undo that, there's absolutely no reason to just like him as a person and try to say that he hasn't also contributed towards uh, oppressing other people. But you can take that and I have a separate thought of employers should not be able to fucking do this to their employees. Like, it's grotesque. And this is not a uniquely, like, uh, Republican or right-wing thing. This is like any, like, boss shouldn't be able to do this to their employees. It doesn't matter if it's Stephen Crowder. It just so happens that Stephen Crowder uh, was taking things far beyond what you normally expect someone to do, where it's just basically like, hey, I don't feel comfortable working here because of, again, all the sexual harassment or, uh, you know, uh, the, the shit that you've been making us do. I don't want to work here anymore. You don't even have to say that. Just like, I... I don't feel comfortable working here anymore, Stephen. I want to leave. I, I want to go uh, and try something else. To then be like is punished by him. As if it's like, you know, it's almost like you can't leave the family. You know, like you cannot leave the inner circle. No one does. I will destroy you. You will not work anywhere. I don't care that you have a child on the way. It, it wouldn't sound like that, though. Like, I don't care that you have a child on the way. I'll destroy you. I'll destroy you, all of you. After two years... Unfortunately, the most egregious part of my NDA, the part that silences my free speech, has no expiration. While well, NDAs are classically used to protect, uh, protect trade secrets, unfortunately in the entertainment industry, they are too often used to protect disgusting, unlawful activity and many forms of abuse. Yep. We see examples of this all the time. Powerful people and their attorneys routinely use NDAs to silence victims in order to remain powerful people. Free speech matters. It matters a lot to me, and that's not just a t-shirt slogan. It really matters. And these kinds of NDAs right here, stemming from this, NDA over the head, over my head, for the rest of Unforceable is only thing if you can afford to fight it in court, yes. And like, honestly, I, there's sometimes when people are like, but you can represent yourself. You can. Are you going to know how to do that proficiently enough to be able to defeat a high-powered lawyer who knows exactly how to try and destroy you sitting across from you on the other side? My life especially when information I have can be used to aid other victims escape their own abusive situations, which is the context for which this former employer feels they caught me breaking my
it's not a free speech issue. Well, yeah, it's certainly not a First Amendment to the Constitution. That's like, you know, the government cannot pass laws uh, infringing on the freedom of assembly, the freedom of religion, the freedom of the press, uh, specifically so that you can criticize your own government. So the government can't say and pass laws that prevent you from being able to talk shit about them. And that is very good, actually. I'm, I'm a big fan of the First Amendment. Uh, so, yeah, it, it's pretty pretty badass, I gotta say. Uh, th this, again, comes down to contract law between a corporation, a company, and uh, one of their employees. Agreement. Let me be clear, what I'm afraid of is legal harassment in perpetuity, not the truth. Only one side of this ordeal is spending a fortune to hide truth and punish anyone who dares speak up for themselves or other victims. While I will not give in to the harassment uh, by my former employer, I have to recognize that this process has already become unbearably expensive. Uh, not only because of the general expense of the legal process, but because my former employer has seemingly unlimited wealth and resources to gleefully spend uh, punishing power. Steam Crowder did stream today. Uh, Baltimore Bridge collapses. Why the use is one domino away from blah, blah, blah. I'm assuming he was just doing like the Baltimore Bridge collapse because of uh, DEI or something and didn't address this at all. This could go on for years and years and quickly escalate into hundreds of thousands of dollars as I fight to protect myself and my family. I cannot put my wife and my children through this. Not again. I cannot be bound to an unconstitutional NDA like this forever. Uh, protecting my family means finding a path that doesn't leave us in financial ruin. And we are simply out of funds and I have no other option but to ask for help. I'm asking for donations for, uh, for two reasons. Um, number one, obviously to help with the Financial burden I've already accrued uh, with this legal matter right here. That's uh, taken care of. That matter is priority, priority number one as I'm going further and further into debt uh, with each passing day. The second reason I'm asking for a financial assistant though, uh, assistance is to proactively address. Charity, hold up. What about them bootstraps? <laughs> <laughs> Clean up your room, bucko. My unconstitutional anti-free speech NDA, which is the basis for all of their claims against me. The simplest resolution here would be for my ex-employer to release me from the NDA. Uh, give me and my fellow ex-employees the same free speech they publicly champion for every other American. But I can almost guarantee you that will not happen. I've already witnessed them spend unfathomable amounts of money in other cases to protect their double life and secrets. No more darkness. That's why beyond the current burden I face from my ex-employer's legal abuse, I will be using these donations to fight back and file a counter motion, placing my unconstitutional NDA before a judge to have it dissolved in its entirety. I want my First Amendment rights back. Yeah, I, I don't know if, like, I'm, I'm guessing a lawyer is most likely going to talk to you about this and, and probably explain to you that this is less of a constitutional battle and more one involving, again, a contract signed between a corporation and an individual and what parts of it are or are not enforceable and what parts he can come after you for. And it might seem like an incredible overreach that isn't even enforceable through contract law to do some of the things that Crowder wants to do. Like, demanding the communication from you and all of your friends, that one seems incredibly fucked up. Uh, demanding that you not work in media for a period of like x amount of years like that like when when companies want you to sign ndas typically yeah it's about proprietary uh information that you may have been uh privy to while working there that they don't want you to be able to sell to their competitors so that makes sense right i'm working at a company i learned how the algorithms work i coded some of them i don't after working for alphabet i probably am not going to be able to be hired by meta and then be like here's all their secrets because then like every corporation would just hire the ex-employees to get all those secrets and so that's why they might make you sign ndas that's very very different than Steven Crowder was pulling out his fucking dick and like putting it on your shoulders, right? Or he was trying to do that to other employees, or he was like doing sketches that made them very sexually uncomfortable, or was demanding that they like go into like, you know, G strings and grease each other up to own the libs and stuff like that. That's not protecting proprietary company secrets. Right. That's in many cases him being involved in crimes. So I, I don't think there's such a thing as an NDA or an NDA clause that can defend you against that. Again, not a lawyer, not trying to give out any kind of legal advice in any way, shape or form. Uh, you know, consult a lawyer if you need uh, help on that. But again, that's that's what I'd imagine is the purpose of like an NDA uh, signed by a company that he yeah. might be able to tell you, like he doesn't have secrets that he wants you to go through. Oh, thank you. It's running on YouTube. Thanks. I want to stop the cycle. There's a sketch at the start. Is it about this? Take a chance to kind of extend an olive branch, if we can. Oh, 
Uh, Finnegan, um, you can't smoke in here. I've, I've told you about this numerous times. Yeah, Tom. Live chat replay was turned off for this video. Curious. Very curious. I told you outside. I told you outside that you can't smoke. Can you just put the cigarette out, please? Just put. We just wanted to, to let you know. Where's the joke? Is it just that this one dude was like annoying for a couple seconds? You no, know how much we appreciate you here. Yeah, and I know I can be a pain in the butt sometimes, and you know I tease you from time to time, but it's all out of love, man. Really? Yeah. Look, I, I want you to know from you know the CEO level down, you're you're one of the guys. You're a part of the team, man. We want you to feel no. like you're part. No. Not the team, family. That's oh, right. wow. That's right, family. family. Sam, you're a part of our family. Tribe. You know what? In the spirit of that, in the spirit of family, mm -hmm. Tribe. we're going. Oh, interesting. They would put this sketch out, or sketch out right now at the very start. I mean, again, I was, I was just kind of, it was a bit that I was talking about how the whole thing, how he thinks of himself as like some kind of mafia boss. Going out in the spirit of being in the same tribe and family, mm -hmm. we're going out tonight. And we're going to go to a bar, have some drinks, and we wanted to invite you with us. Really? See if you wanted to, like, let loose a little bit, yes. you know, blow some steam. That yeah. sounds great. Does Thank it? Thank you, yeah. We'll really? include you. Yes. Your friends do. That's right. Family. No, family. Family. Family does. Well, the family of the workplace, but... <laughs> we're not a friend. friend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of the hereditary oh, oh. diseases. If you're not Ashkenazi Jewish and then marrying your first cousin for several generations, that wouldn't happen. No, I wouldn't that's, do that, but I know that, you, I know that you do. But it's okay because it's the thing. It's yeah. what makes us different. It's what makes us so much the same. I kissed a cousin once. Really? I didn't even know he uh, was here until... Till now. You kissed your cousin? Yeah. Oh, was it the one I met? No, no. Different one. No, a different guy. It wasn't the one I met? Oh, I guess I, 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 I kissed I kiss that cousin. Hi, Sam. Hi, Finnegan. How are you doing? So we will go. What the fuck is this? I don't have a good answer for you. I have absolutely no idea. I've, apparently, to the crowdist audience, it's uh, absolutely hilarious. Um, again, though, incredibly weird sketch to open your show with uh, after, you know, the, this bombshell revelation just came out. Oh, to a place Bye -bye. and have uh, drinks. Because, like, last time, and I, I, you know, can't in any way, shape, or confirm that he's responding to Jared and Jared's statement and, you know, uh, trying to battle him legally now uh, with this kind of, like, you know, maybe you could see it as an intimidation sketch or something. But he did do that when those stories came out, the one that was, pre like, a, what is it, published in Mediaite about multiple, you know, employees of his saying that, you know, he had either sexually harassed them or he was creating an unsafe workplace or was very abusive to them and all this kind of stuff. Um, he then decided the best way to respond to that was with a sketch. And, it, again, in the sketch he pretends to like pull his dick out in front of everybody again it's like yeah, it's the thing i do apparently it's uh, like wrong to do or something okay all right sounds good i'll get my he's uh, not above it is what i'm saying attache case and we'll get going okay Yeah, it's the hangover. It's also it's always sunny. And it's references. God, I look like crap. Why does my back hurt? What the f Oh my god. It's a Nazi cross. Oh god. It's not coming off. This is real. Now you can't be buried in a Jewish cemetery! <laughs> With your oh, relatives! Okay. Oh, it hurts. You suck, Sam! It's not coming off. You suck! <laughs> Again, like, so... And that's the joke? Like... Got him. <laughs> we can't, can't all have perfect Aryan genes, Gerald. Well, try harder. Actually, they're Lois. So, bring up the rundown. Uh, let me show you here today. We have major update from Mug Club Undercover, Chippewa. I don't think he's going to address it. Known. This takes incredible resources. I, I simply don't have. Um, Truthfully, I don't know how much money this will take, probably much more than my current goal is. But every penny, every penny I do have left. Yeah, I mean, I won't be donating. I'd, I'd rather be putting my money towards something like the UNRWA. But, uh, you know, you do you. Anyone who wants to support any cause, go uh, go do your things. Um, 
again, at the end of the day, yeah, I, I think it's pretty fucking clear that, uh, you know, Jared did a ton of fucked up shit, but he was definitely uh, allegedly uh, abused um, by Steven Crowder. Uh, Steven Crowder took advantage of his position as a boss to both uh, physically and sexually allegedly abuse uh, his own employees and then try to intimidate them afterwards when they tried to leave or, um, you know, uh, obviously prevent them from ever telling their stories of the things that they witnessed. From your donations. We'll go toward helping. And honestly, he says he's got all these receipts. Uh, it sounds like something that could eventually, you know, be even worse than some of the stories we've already heard. Other ex-employees, dear friends of mine, fight back and escape their identical situations with the same employer. Um, to accept donations, I've set up a GoFundMe. And to make it easy, you can go to freejaredmonroe.com. It will, it will take you there. Um, please share this message. I know some of you cannot afford to help, but simply retweeting this post helps so much. And for any of you who can't help, big or small. He has raised $47,000 already. Public or There's a lot of people who hate um, Stephen Crowder on the right. I, my wife, my children, thank you from the bottoms of our hearts. And... I do just want to say this. If you too are or have been a victim of such abuse, for whatever it's worth, know that I see you and I hear you, and I encourage you to be courageous. No more darkness. Victims of the cruel and powerful deserve a voice. Truth is the sword that slays the monsters, so let there be truth. Free speech matters. I want the leaks. I gotta be honest with you. I really, I really want to see the, all the the receipts, and I want to hear. But there's uh, the ex-host of Tim Pool Show, Adam Krigler, or Krigler. Uh, Candace Owens. Wait till they find out what he's been doing to his wife. I never edited my opinion on Steven Crowder because I knew that everything would eventually be revealed. This really is going to be a year of revelations. I am ready and excited. You know, personality for years. He does not name Crowder in the video, but a source told Mediate that he is the subject. Enough is enough. This can't go on any longer. Monroe said, I'm currently being legally abused and intimidated into silence by my former employer. Monroe worked on Louder with Crowder from 2014 to 2018, serving as the co-host on the show. The program reached a massive audience on YouTube, eventually boasting 5.8 million subscribers before it decamped to a much smaller alternative video platform, Rumble. It's still on YouTube, by the way. In addition to the smaller platform, internal turmoil and scandals involving uh, the host have put a dent on its audience. Monroe decided to quit the show in August 2018 saying, I can no longer put myself or my growing family through this toxic and abusive work environment I had endured for years. This place was and is to this day the workplace rife with sexual misconduct, degeneracy, and aggression. So because he said degeneracy, and again, you know, he was incredibly homophobic himself, I'm going to assume that probably relates to some of the other activities that have been, uh, you know, stated by other uh, ex-employees of Crowder, uh, that, uh, you know, he was uh, consistently trying to expose himself to employees and stuff like that. In a sexual manner, um, Monroe claimed the work environment was so toxic he admitted to the hospital at one point for a heart condition and was put on anti-anxiety medication. Uh, he alleged that he was bullied into signing an aggressive separation agreement after a drawn-out legal fight in which Crowder's lawyers argued he should be blocked away from work working in media anywhere else in the world for two years, have his personal Twitter account seized, and turn over all his personal production equipment that he paid for himself. Eventually, after emptying his personal bank account to pay for legal fees and with a pregnant wife at home, Monroe said he eventually gave in and accepted a deal with Crowder that paid him no money and enforced a non-compete and non-disparagement clause. Then, October 2023, five years after Monroe had left Louder with Crowder, he had been served a cease and desist from his former employer, threatening legal action if he did not immediately cease all communication with others about the company. So you can't even talk to your friends about how you were mistreated by Crowder. He also said he served a Rule 202 petition which demanded he be subjected to a deposition under oath in which his lawyers could question him about his communication and hand over documents of any communication about the company. The threats came after Mediatic reported on allegations of bullying, inappropriate drug use, and lewd sexual uh, workplace misconduct and louder with Crowder. After the report, sources told Mediatic that Crowder sought to crack down on leaks to media outlets. He sent draconian non-disclosure agreements to his current staff with a $100,000 breach of contract penalty. While Monroe's non-compete expired after two years, the term of his non-disparagement clause is unlimited. 
hence the fresh legal action from Crowder. Bonner said he refused to comply with Crowder's demands, stating he did not want to open himself up to more legal abuse from his former boss. Then last week, Crowder demands Monroe's deposition in cooperation and handing over the documents, and it was awarded by the court. They await my forced cooperation, Monroe said, and I will not, I will not continue to fight. In this video, Monroe requested Crowder release him from his non-disclosure agreement. He's now asking for donations to help him and his other ex-employees of Crowder to fight back. He plans on using any money raised to file a counter motion and to have the non-disclosure agreement tossed out. Jared isn't a rich man, said one louder with Crowder employee who requested an anonymity out of fear of retaliation. He knows Stephen has millions of dollars and an army of lawyers. Stephen is extremely vindictive and always looks for any opportunity to get back at anyone he feels has wronged him. Even just leaving the show he views as a huge betrayal. Jared is basically faced with an abusive ex-boss who wants to make his life a living hell and has the funds to do so. Monroe isn't the only one who's been subjected to legal action from Crowder following the statement. We will not be intimidated by media smear tactics. Mr. Monroe entered into an media. <laughs> He worked for you. <laughs> Mr. Monroe entered into an agreement with Louder with Crowder. Oh, so you're referring to, uh, I guess, Mediaite asking you for a comment. <laughs> you will not smear us. We will not be intimidated by your smear tactics. That's your official statement. That's okay. Yeah, we'll print it for sure. Mr. Monroe entered into an agreement with Louder with Crowder that he knowingly violated. Did you, like, have an agreement that he's allowed to put his balls on your body? Is that part of the agreement? At any time, Mr. Crowder should be allowed to introduce his balls into the scenario and inter and also place them firmly upon your shoulders. That's uh, in the contract, yes, unfortunately. So, what can we say? After discovering repeated violations, Louder with Crowder was forced to take legal action. The trial court denied Mr. Monroe's effort to avoid legal proceedings, which are moving forward pursuant to the court's order. I feel this one was also consulted with your lawyers in order to phrase it just the way you wanted, but on the right, uh, on every level, you know, massive hypocrite, massive, massive hypocrite, doesn't care about family values, doesn't care about protecting kids, doesn't care, like, he's totally fine destroying people's lives, even if they, you know, uh, have children, even if they just want to leave his company, like, it's not even like this was a vindictive, like, I tried to expose Steven Crowder and then he came after me, it's like, I tried to not work there anymore because it was really, really abusive and scary. And then he came after me, you know? Howdy, everybody. I just wanted to let you know that for the cost of a cup of coffee, you can unlock bonus uncensored episodes of Mind Explosions by going to patreon.com slash the serves. Our videos couldn't exist without your support, and all our content is released early to our Patreon subscribers, as well as a ton of extra content you can't get anywhere else. Please like, subscribe, and thumbs up this channel. And if you're feeling extra perky, share it anywhere you think people would like to see or learn from our videos. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. We first want to give a shout out to everyone who makes this show possible. This program is produced thanks to the generous support of our Patreon supporters. Anna Loves Riley, Arian McCarthy, Cheryl Alvarez, Comrade Junkie, Doug Caddy, Everything Important, Hegbar Celine, Jimmy Sombrero, Multimondi, Omni, Peanut Butter Blondie, Political Poppy, Preston Kroll, Quite 185, Richard Bomey, Riley and Anna, Roller Dragon, Ruby, Cernicus, Stellar Gwynn, Sebastian Demmel, Travis McClinton, and Words Greenwood. As well as every other person you see on the screen right now, this show would not be possible without them. And if you want to join these wonderful people who make this entire program possible, simply go to patreon.com slash the service and you can unlock uncensored and bonus episodes and, you know, help us exist.